All right, fantastic. Welcome back. You're still hanging out with us uh, right here on Why in the Morning. My name is Brian Sako and I'm so excited that you're still hanging out with us. But before we go too far, let's interact on our socials and that include Instagram, Facebook, as well as, uh, yes, YouTube. Yeah, sure. Why not? On YouTube, including TikTok, but don't show that you follow us at Y254 channel. But you can always find me at Brian Sakwana1 with the hashtag Y in the morning. That's where you can plug in on. And we had asked you an interesting question, by the way. So I'll be sampling your feedback towards um, the tail end of this show because you have an amazing uh, programming lined up for you. But before we get too far, we're going to talk about how to manage a business successfully or either way, managing successful business or successful business management. And uh, we're going to speak to someone who has already established something for themselves and they're actually in competition as well. So uh, joining us live in studio is an amazing, beautiful lady, gorgeous lady. She is Liz Kuhi Njiraini. She is the founder of Pop Fusion and also a wealth coach. In, a wealth coach. In short, she teaches you how to be rich, how to amass assets. And I remember she told me past income. Good morning to you, Liz. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm fantastic. Nice to meet you. How are you Good feeling? Good to meet you. I'm feeling great to be on the show this morning. Right. Yeah, and to speak to your listeners. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Right, so just tell us a brief uh, history about yourself and how you find yourself starting a business that's actually, you know, taken off. I feel like it's a fast, a fast lane business because uh, looking at the background and, and just a description of your business, it, do, it doesn't look like a business that's struggling. It looks like <laughs> a business that has a lot of, you know, support. How did you actually even get there as well? Yeah, so we started um, Pop Fusion just a few months ago, December last year. And as you rightly put it, it's a business that has, is on the first lane. And just to take you back, before we started Pop Fusion, a few years back, um, in 2016, we have this value that we have in our family, where we buy for a child only one phone. Any other phone, any upgrade, they buy it for themselves. Okay. So about 2016, uh, one of our children lost their phone and they were very devastated because they knew about this. Yeah. And so we told them, why don't you start a business, something that can help you buy a new phone? Okay. So, she, you know, she thought about it and said, I will do popcorn. So she would make popcorn, sell it in school, come the next day with orders. And within the term, she was able to buy her new phone. Yeah. At that time, we were doing two flavors. Um, yeah. So that was very inspiring for us and also for her to understand that even just as a teenager, she could replace that asset. Right. So fast forward a few years, um, popcorn is something we talk about in, our, in my wealth coach business. Because right. when we take you through the class, we talk about how do you create passive income? How do you create a viable business? So we have always used it as an example. And um, for us, we have validated this idea over time because we worked with someone who's already in this business. So over the years, we had the numbers, we kept updating it, but rev never really got to do it. Then last year, we said, hey, we've talked about this. We know how to create the product. Why don't we just start it? Right. And that is how Pop Fusion was born in December right. um, last year. And we started our first shop at Surrey, to your city. All right. Yeah. Because uh, I was trying to actually even follow you on social media. You guys have, uh, you're, you're trying to establish your base on social media. And I'd like you to actually tell us why is it important for a business to have a presence online, especially in a world where everybody's on, on their smartphone. People are, you know, uh, traversing through the world of social media as well. Why is it that key and major to have your business online? Well, it's really important to go online because that is where your customers are. Previous years, you know, if you look way back to how communication happened, um, you'd get maybe an invoice or even a brochure on mail, you know, snail mail. And then we moved and we got to email. But then people really don't use their email for that kind of interaction. We have again moved. And these are called disruptions. So if a business does not adapt and does not move with the disruption, then you find that your, customer are, your customers are in a different location from where you are. So right. for us, being on social is really important because we get to interact. Customers send us photos of the product they've taken and we put it on social. And we get also to know who our repeat customers are. We tell them about our launches. Anything new that we are launching, they are able to know from social media. So right. it's a nice place to be because that's our community. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm also interested to know that how, uh, what exactly pushed you to just like focus on popcorn only? Yeah. Because I know even uh, as a businessman or as a businesswoman, <laughs> you might want to diversify at some point. You're like, I want to be a master or a jack of all trades. So I'm not just going to do popcorn only. At least let me do crisps or let me do chapati as well as mandazi. Why uh, popcorn only? Okay, that's an interesting question. So coming from someone who has uh, played corporate uh, musical chairs, I've sat in different roles in the organizations I've worked with, okay. both internationally and locally. Okay. And so uh, by internationally, I mean the organizations I worked for had international presence. So I've garnered a lot of experience and through this I have learned that it's really important to take a deep dive and focus. And the example I like using is the rays of the sun. If you go outside now, if the weather is good, you can get a nice sun bask. However, if someone takes a lens and takes the same rays and shines them on a piece of paper, it'll catch fire. Right. So focus is really important. It okay. gets you fired up and it allows you to really go into a space that you want to specialize and become known for something. So yeah. I'm known as a wealth coach. And now because I love popcorn so much, I'm also known as Kuhe, the person who wants pop fishing. All right, interesting, yeah. because I'm trying to, to look at it like you know, from a point of like, you're teaching people how to be wealthy, but here you're also trying to navigate the world of business. Now about clientele, uh, yeah. who are mainly the people that buy your products? Because I believe in every business, there's always that, there's always that niche. Yeah. And then you'll also tell us how you exactly identify the niche, that mm -hmm. this is what you need to bring to the market, and how is it satisfying me at the same time, it's satisfying the niche in the, in the market. Okay. So our biggest clientele are families and also teenagers, young people, and people who love popcorn. So you find that we have uh, clients from really young people to really the elderly. And um, the reason for that is popcorn is a very versatile grain. It's something that's a, it's a whole meal, and so you can eat it at any time. Right. Um, we have repeat customers, people who keep coming back to us. We right. have also customers who buy in bulk because they have birthdays or right. occasions, or they love the different flavors that we have. Right. Um, now, what helped us identify that is we, when we approached um, Sarit, they were very gracious to us and they said, if you have this kind of product, why don't you try to be in this space in the mall? And that was a perfect space for us because we get to interact with different people. We have international clients. When we look at our incoming, we have a lot of nationalities really who buy from us. And that just goes to show that with a small product, you can serve a wide range of people. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I, love, I love the fact that you're so enthusiastic about, you know, trying to create, you know, uh, some sort of uh, relationship with your client. Then on that note, talk about how important it is to have a customer care client relationship. Is, is it that important and is it necessary to have for, uh, let's say, for longevity and posterity of a business? Yes, I believe it is. Now, customer care is at the core of any business because if your customer is happy with the service that you provide, then they will be able to come back and refer you to other people. And that grows your network organically, even without advertising. Now, one of the biggest things that is a core value for us at Pop Fusion is taking care of our, our staff because they are the ones who have the one-on-one -on -one contact with our customers. So we have, uh, we've had the privilege of hiring very talented and bright people, young people, so also job creation, but just allowing them to give us feedback. This is what the customers say. This is the popular flavor. This is what people think you should add to the menu. So we take that feedback, take it back to R&D and see how best we can continue to improve the product and continue to satisfy our customer. Because right. without them, we are not in business. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, yeah. good one. Uh, what about uh, staying afloat in, in, in terms of hard times? Because I know there's always good and bad days in business, yeah. as well as any other job. <laughs> yeah. you know. how, how do you manage hard times? So for us at Pop Fusion, we try to keep our overheads low, meaning that what we commit to our staff and all our business partners is something that we can stick to. So we don't really go overboard in terms of our expenses. And then um, when the hard times come, you really have to... Um, really just, how do I call it, tighten the belt as we call it, kukazam shipi. So uh -huh. you would really focus on the essentials. This is what we need to do for the business to run. And then these are the frills. These are things that we can do later when the business uh -huh. is quite profitable. And in our business, it's actually seasonal because based on the location that we are, and we are coming soon in another location, you yeah. find that the numbers of people visiting the mall sometimes fluctuates. 
And so we just make sure our staff are friendly. We are providing the best service so that because it's an all weather product, you can right. take it when it's cold or hot. So we have that advantage of being able to sell at any time. But when the numbers are low, we focus on what is essential. Right. Yeah. Because uh, at, the, at the same time, you know, that, that those times you, you have, you, you've, like for example, you've already cooked, uh, I don't know if you cook them or there's a way you use a machine. Because <laughs> yeah. I believe it's cooked food anyways. Yeah. You have like huge stock and then the clients, that, that time they're not there, you know. Uh -huh. And then you have less stock and then clients are there. Okay, right. so what happens with the pop fusion is actually our tagline is fresh extraordinary pop okay. because we pop it fresh for you. So anytime you get a box of pop fusion, it has been popped fresh. Right. Now what that means is that we only use ingredients, we have a just in time system. We only use ingredients as we need them and then we do production for the addition ingredients that we have for the different flavors. Right. Um, we have an idea of what the market needs. If products expire, we throw them out because our promise yeah. to the customer is we want it to be fresh and extraordinary all the time. Right. Yeah. And, and how do you handle competition now? Because I know you're, you're best at uh, one of the, you know, some of the, I'll call them elite, <laughs> elite <laughs> spaces in Nairobi where mm. uh, I, I believe like you can't get a mamamboga who has, you know, a product like yours at Sarit or mm. even at Village Market. Like it's mainly, it's cut for people for certain cadres. So it's very specific. Now, how do you handle staying afloat in terms of competitors of course every business has a competition yeah. and somebody said it's good to be in competition because it keeps you in check how yeah. do you manage it so we actually love competition because it validates your idea if many people are in a space it means there's something in that space um, and so one of the things we do is keeping our prices really low uh, yeah. because this is value-added popcorn. It's, in addition to the classic salted popcorn, we have different flavors. Okay. And so we keep our costs low. Um, the other thing is to make sure we continue to innovate. Um, and our biggest thing, because we care for our customer, we don't use, say, things like food color. We actually right. use natural ingredients, we use olive oil in the machines, and we believe that when the customers know that we care that much about them, they will keep coming back. Right. And as for competition, it is good because it only increases the space, and as we grow, then we get into those other spaces. All right, good yeah. one. And for this, for, for this kind of business, would you call yourself like a manufacturer, like you create from scratch? And if yes, uh, where do you like source for your material and then finally come up with this product? Like just take us through that journey of the final product that we have. Okay, so we come up with the packaging design and that is done separately and we make sure our packaging is always clean and ready for the customer. Then right. for, the, for the ingredients, of course, there is the corn. And okay. so we buy high quality corn. Oh, you buy them? Yeah, like we you buy the corn. From a shamba somewhere. No. So okay. you'd, you'd call us processors pretty much because right. we take something that has been grown and okay. then we take it through the machine, the popping process. And then now we value add using the unique pop fusion mixes. So okay. one of our mixes, um, a popular one, is called cookies and cream. Okay. And so we take the popped popcorn and then mix it together with a unique mix and then we serve it to the customer depending on what it is they wanted. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a way, we have different suppliers because of the different products that we use and uh, together with the, the nutritionist and the, the chef that we use because this product has to go through R&D. Is it good? Is it tasting well? Is it healthy? Yeah. And so before we put it out in the market, all that has to be done. So we have different suppliers and we, re we have our restock levels where we procure as and when needed. Right. Certified yeah. by cabs? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Now I'll talk about how marketing is so essential, especially in a day where, you know, people are busy with their lifestyles. How do you reach, how do you reach to those uh, clients that maybe are not aware of your business in terms of, you know, product awareness, which I know is very key in yes. marketing? Okay, so in terms of product awareness, as you rightly said before, we largely depend on social media in terms of getting word out that this is what we are doing, this is where we are at, and these are the promotions we are running at the moment. And then we also have um, the people who come to the store. We are also signing up with the mall where we are at with their loyalty card. So a lot of clients would want to use their points in our store. So that's another way that we are doing it. And then individually as business owners, we are also reaching out to our networks and telling them, hey, we're at Sarit, a box of pop costs this much, come and grab uh, pop as you, you do your shopping or you do whatever it is you're doing in the mall. All right. Yeah. Distribution, which is, I believe, is among the four Ds of marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you distribute your products to various outlets okay. for sale? All right. So primarily we are at the store. 
although we are getting into partnerships with um, the food distributors, we know them in our city, okay. so that we can be able to get you your pop at the comfort of your home. So if you're watching a football match or you have a birthday party, you can simply order and that is coming soon. Right, okay. Yeah. Now talk about uh, the, a little bit background of it. You had mentioned it although earlier on. Yeah. In terms of giving people opportunities, how many people do you have on board? And uh, what was the criteria that you used to select? That maybe they had a history in being, you know, uh, let's say, and what is the cost about cooking? And you know, maybe they, they, they were <laughs> chefs somewhere, mm. or they were experts in food or, or something. Like, what was the criteria of selecting the people you're working with on board? And also, have you made any profit so far? And if you've made it, yes, <laughs> how did you manage it? How did you feel? How was everything during that time? Okay, great. So we have a team of five people who are permanent. And then we have a temporary two people. And these come in when we are doing events or we are going out there for extra activities. Um, we believe in hiring people who are enthusiastic, authentic, and we have one of them in studio today who has brought some samples. And oh, um, Zetu, Zakukula? It's Zenu, yes. Okay, yeah, you. that's <laughs> of the house, Karibuni Sana. Right. So um, we, we like people who as themselves, as individuals, are very enthusiastic, very honest, they have a good work ethic, and are willing to learn. Because this is a business that you can teach anyone, however, the willingness to learn has to be there. And then now we take that raw talent, and we take them through training, customer service, how do you increase your sales numbers, how do you manage your targets, how do you manage yourself when there's a low, you know, a low season. Yeah. Right. And how do you manage it when it's a high season? Supply so we also, yes, we also have the incentives that we give them just to yeah. encourage them. And so far, we have a great team. Uh, in total, how many? We have uh, five uh, permanent and, yeah. and two who move around. All right, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Now, mm, I've, I've seen a lot of popcorn businesses out there. Yeah. <laughs> and a <laughs> few, few of them that make it to the level of yours are actually uh, there are a handful. Uh, talk about how yours is so unique and different from the rest. Because you can prosper at Tiki Bandaski and see somebody selling popcorn and yeah. you're like, okay, this is just popcorn. What, what, how different is it from the normal popcorn out there? Okay. I think one of the things is that we, we make our popcorn with a lot of love and care. And okay. so other than it being classic pop, we have what we call... Um, the pop fusion mixes. So I can right. take you through the mixes right it's now. It's like a cocktail? Yes. Okay, yeah. please. So please we start. have the cookies and cream. We okay. have a sweet vegan flavor. Uh, we have butter pop, as the name suggests, it has butter. Okay. And then we also have um, uh, what we call candy pop. This is for the kids. It has a lot of candy, M&Ms uh, in there. Mm -hmm. And then we have classic pop. And then um, I think I have mentioned sweet vegan. And this takes so care of the... So vegan means that vegan. It's, mainly man, it's, it's mainly vegetable, veg. Um, l let me not put it that way, but the ingredients are... Are more like yeah. plant from plants. Plants, yeah. Right. So we take care of okay. that community of people who can't really uh, go outside that restriction. Right. And so um, what that means for us is we have to prepare the mixes and then we have to make sure that they are stocked in the shop and in the new shop that's coming up in April. And then anytime we have an expo, we also ensure that these products are there. Um, the other thing that makes us unique is the fact that it's fresh popcorn. So you know you can popcorn, leave it in the machine and wait for the customer. For yeah. us, we pop just enough to make sure that you're having a, a fresh serving of popcorn. And as you wait for your popcorn to be made in two minutes, it's a nice experience just to see the mixes, how it's right. done, how it's packaged. But you also you have a machine. You yes. have like the machine that does even the packaging as well. Ama, you do like packaging from a different we location? Do, no, we do packaging right at the, at the store. So as okay. you wait for your pop, within two minutes, it's you prepared and it. then served to you. Right, interesting. Yeah. yeah, we find our customers love the experience of just watching how everything is done. Right. Yes. And, and what do your customers tell you mostly? Because uh, I think it's last week when I, I, was, I, I had a friend of mine and we actually tried to check through your socials. And yeah. he was telling me that his girlfriend went to a certain mall somewhere and he, pu he, he pulled up with this. And I was like, wow, then it's nice to have that guest. Because I personally didn't even know that this was your product. Because I've always seen it with like celebrities and whatnot. Oh, wow. So, so uh, I was really amazed. Now, how do you actually deal with feedback, uh, especially people that write emails? Because mm it's social media yes and then maybe somebody's disgusted uh, maybe disgruntled let me use the word disgruntled they're not happy yeah and uh, that day they're giving you their their mind how do you deal with people that give different types of feedback especially after they've consumed your product okay that's a good question so we have our marketing manager who handles the, our 
email, you know, and social, immediately a complaint comes through, I get to know. If it comes through the shop, I get to know. We have had very little complaint. And the one particular one that we had took us back to R&D. We redid the product and sent it back to the shop and compensated this client. So we are very big on making sure our customer is happy and really listening because we live in a day and age where if you don't listen to your customer, they walk away. So we make it a priority, myself included, to make sure that if a complaint comes in, we handle it with the strict test of confidence and make sure that we understand what is this customer saying right. and then we deal with it accordingly. Fantastic. Yeah. Branding, very important in, in marketing as well. Like the personality of your product is speaks for itself. Like the yeah. first impression, they say there's no room to make another second impression. The yeah. first impression usually sticks forever. You can't change that. Yeah. Now talk about how important it is to have an amazing and a seamless fluid uh, personality for your product, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like this first line. I was trying to compare yours with KFC yeah. and, and, and the rest of the brands that uh, have a very good, uh, uh, captivating, let me say, a striking uh, personality. Once you land your eyes on the packaging, you're like, I want this. Yeah. Talk about how uh, important it is to have that. Okay, great. So I hope we rank very well according to your own <laughs> personal review. Right. But um, branding is really important for a company because that is what speaks for you when you're not there as an individual to speak for yourself. And one of the things we wanted Pop Fusion to have is a great logo and a great packaging and also a great stall. When you visit us at Sarit, you'll see it. And so we had to go out there and look for top designers people who understand what we want and can articulate and put it on paper. So right. we had um, Black Co-Creations do the uh, packaging design for us. And then we looked again for the top packaging companies in the country and right. we found someone who can produce what we want, w someone who can meet our reorder levels. And so this is a packaging that we came up with. Okay. Now, this is the physical one. So digital assets as well, in terms yeah. of branding, we looked for top talent. And then this person is working to make sure that we have a good image on social media and not just good, but authentic. Something that really represents our love for popcorn and our love for our clients. All right. Now, uh, I'd also like you to talk about, like, you know, uh, when, when it comes to, to your, other, your other job, you yeah. mentioned you're a wealth coach. How yes. do you integrate and manage between, you know, how owning this business and at the same time being there and, yeah. and, and, and doing your coaching lessons? Because I believe there must be a balance. And, you know, they say women in business. There's that hashtag of women in business. <laughs> As a woman in business, how do you manage juggling between, you know, being the two careers. Okay, so that has been, that stretched me because when we started this, a startup is like a baby almost, you know? A lot of work has to be done, hand-holding and making sure things are going well, processes are put in place. So one of the first things I did um, is to create time within my day and dedicate it to Pop Fusion. Okay. And so this could mean talking to my marketing people, talking to the people at the store, talking to suppliers, just understanding the best way that we can push this product forward. Um, and so balance for me looks like showing up for my responsibilities. Okay. First as a mom, then as a coach, then as a business owner at Pop Fusion. Yeah. And that means that my day has certain, there are certain blocks of time. I believe in time blocking. So okay. if I am doing email between 11 and 12, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Then I move to another task. And right. then, of course, creating appointments and having my team help me to really just make sure that I'm on track with the things I need to do. Right. And delegation is a big thing because okay. no one can do it alone, really. If you want to grow, you okay. need people to go alongside you. Exactly. Yeah. Before you tell us what are some of the principles you go by and yeah. if you've made any profit so far, <laughs> you have something for us here on the, on the table. And I think I'm loving it. Uh, now, what is this? Does it have like a specific uh, taste? Or uh, let's say uh, the colors, because uh, I can see it's, uh, this is like orange and yellow. Maybe yeah. I'm colorblind, so you, <laughs> you'll tell me. <laughs> okay, right. so we have what we have on the table today and some other boxes we brought okay. is called Candy Pop. So Ca can Candy. Candy okay. pop. Candy pop. Yeah. That means it has some, uh, some, some taste with sugar. sugar yes, related. absolutely. Uh -huh. So we pop the corn okay. and then we salt it for those clients who prefer their candy pop with a bit of salt. Okay. And then we put in the pop fusion mix. Okay. And then we add in some candy. This pop fusion, that's where I'm stuck. Because <laughs> we're in the pop <laughs> itself. Anyways, popcorn pops, but yeah. I'm trying to relate it. Like pop fusion, is it like a mixture of, 
ingredients and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. It's a okay. mixture of ingredients and then we add it to the popped popcorn okay. in, in a container and then we mix it up and then put serve it for the clients. All right. This yes. one is mainly for kids now? Because um, candy is... I yeah, candy, candy, I'd say kids and the young at heart because we have adults who absolutely love this product. All right. Yeah. Now, Joma, baby girl, so I'm going to you, Sana. Now, talk to us about some of the... If you've made profit so far, how much was it? I don't know if you're free to tell us, but I know <laughs> if you've made profit, I know it's a huge amount of money as well. Have you made any so yes, far? Yes, so we have made profit, but our principle right now is to plow everything back into the business because we want this business to grow. And so we plow everything back into investing in our staff, investing in expanding the stores, and also investing in our equipment and making sure that we are ready for the next big thing. So right. if you have a big event, we are ready for you. If there is a new mall that meets our criteria in terms of numbers, we are ready to do business. All right, before, bef before you talk about the principles you go by, I've, I've remembered something. What are some of the market trends in your business mm -hmm. that you feel like after some time you have to adapt to them, even in terms of uh, your product and, and your consumers? Are there any so far that you've noted that yes. are giving you a run for your money? <laughs> yes, we have noted some trends. Of All course, right. when people see a good product, they try and go and you know, try and make it. And so for us, we re our commitment to our customer is quality okay. and making sure that we continue to give them fresh, extraordinary pop at a good price. Okay. Um, the other trends we have noticed is that when the school term is off, children are at home, our numbers really go high. We've also noticed that weekends are good, a good time for us to be both in the store and also in exhibitions or different places where people are interacting. So we are still looking at the numbers and still working them out. But the important thing for us is not only to hit a financial goal, but also yeah. to hit a spot in the hearts of our, of our customers, right. that this is a product that I want to go back for. And the, I think the biggest trend I would point out is the repeat customers. We have right. customers who come back. I also, just like you, I meet people with a box and ask right. them, can I take a photo with you? Because yeah. for me, that is brand validation when I see it out there with different people. Okay. Yeah, and so before you leave them all, of course, grab a box of pop grab fish. Grab a box of popcorn and get to enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, uh, you, had, you, you had touched a little bit yes. on your wealth coach. Who is a wealth coach exactly? All right. So a wealth coach is someone who helps you create a lifestyle and um, create lifestyle freedom and give you the kind of vision that you have for your future. So wealth can be defined only as money, but that is not true. Wealth is also about your well-being as an individual and also your physical well-being. However, okay. I focus more on your emotional well-being and okay. your financial well-being. All right, we're going to take a break and then when we come back, you'll tell us more about that and then some of the principles you go by. As okay. You're also a CEO and founder. <laughs> So yes. you tell us more about that. So we're going to take a very short break on that hashtag Why in the Morning at Y254 channel at Brian Sekouan 1. And I think uh, you said yours, your personal handle was that? Uh, Liz Kuhi N. Liz Kuhi N. So check out. So we're going to take a break and then we come back. Stay right there. Y254, imagine.